In this tutorial, I'll show you how we can set up Spring Cloud Config Server from the scratch. We'll walk you through step by step the entire process and we'll have it up and running by the end of this tutorial. So let's check it out. All right, so I'm gonna to go to start.spring.io and I'm gonna create a new Spring Boot project. This shouldn't come as a surprise if you have been working with Spring Boot and Spring Cloud projects. Anything associated with standing up a new instance requires a Spring Boot project. Similarly, this is also like that. So I have Spring Cloud Config Server, and I'm going to create one dependency, which is this Config Server dependency. We know that this is a Config Server. We're creating Spring Boot Config Server. So the way to create this is by creating a new Spring Boot project with at least one dependency. This one dependency is required, Config Server. That should be it. As you can see over here, the description says, central management for configuration via git svn or HashiCorp vault. So these are the three sources that Spring Cloud Config Server can pull up configuration from. We're gonna be exploring git because that's the most popular. Okay, so I'm gonna download this, open this in IntelliJ, and the next thing I'm gonna do is open pom.xml, and here is our Config Server dependency here, which is what we have selected. Okay, now I'm going to add one change to this project. I'm going to go to the main class here, which is source main Java, Spring Cloud, Config Server application, the main application. I'm gonna add this one annotation here, which is enable config server. And now the config server is good to go, except it doesn't know where to pull up the value from. Right? Where is it looking up the value? If you start the config server, it's gonna say, hey, I have no idea where to look up the value from. Okay, so we're gonna have it pull up value from Git. Okay, so I'm gonna to go to the property file here, application.properties, and I'm gonna put this one property here, which is spring cloud config server git URI. As you can imagine, this is the URI for the Git repository where this should look up values from. It's gonna assume that that Git repository has config files checked in, it has property files or YAML files checked in, and it's just gonna look it up from there. Now, what is the URI that I need to create? Well, I need to point it to a Git repository. I can either point it to an online repository, something like GitHub or GitLab, or I can point it to a local repository. It's easier to do it local. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna make it local but most of the times what you end up having is a repository that you have published a remote branch somewhere, and that URL is what you put over here. Let's say it's on GitHub, okay? You publish the repo on GitHub and then put that repository URL over here. For this tutorial, I'm gonna create a local Git repo on my local machine. I'm gonna provide a local URL, okay? I'll show you how to do this. So I'm gonna go to my command prompt. I'm at the code folder in my machine and I'm gonna create a directory called config repo, okay? And uh, I'm gonna to switch to that. And here, I'm going to create a configuration file, okay? I'm gonna call this application.yaml, okay? And uh, I'm gonna copy over the YAML content from my original YAML file. Let me copy these two sections. Over to my property file, and I'm gonna change a couple of values here. from config server. And uh, one more to the value, connection string here from config server. So I've changed a bunch of values over here. I'm gonna save and quit. Now I have this file sitting here in the config repo directory. Now I'm going to commit this file to a local Git repo. This is not a Git repo yet. It's just a simple directory with one file. 
I'm going to create the Git repo here by doing git init. All right, this initializes an empty Git repository. I'm going to look at the status here. It says there is one untracked file. I'm going to add this. Now, if I look at the status, there is one change to be committed. I'm going to use the git commit dash m and then the message. If you're not familiar with git, definitely look up some content or put a note in the comments and uh, let me know if you want me to make some content on git, tutorials on git. All right, so I've committed it, git status, there's nothing to cut, you know, nothing to commit here, it's clean. So my one application.yaml file is committed to this git repo. Okay, now I can add the location of this local git repo to my server property file, the config server property file, right? The location needs to be specified there. So I'm gonna go there. This is where I need to specify the location. I'm gonna say this is in my home directory, so I'm gonna actually use the system path here. I'm gonna say dollar curly brace home slash code slash, let's see what's the path here. Home code config repo. So I'm gonna specify that over here. Now, how, what is dollar home? Dollar curly brace home. Well, that is the system property for the home location, right? And Unix and Linux and Mac systems, home stands for the home location. Now, how am I able to access this in my application.properties file? Well, we talked about this. The system variables are one source of information for your properties. So this is just using a typical placeholder resolution and it is trying to resolve to see what is the value for the home property. Spring Framework finds that there is a system variable called home. It just injects that. That happens to be the path to my home directory. If you want to specify the directory yourself, you have to use the file colon slash slash uh, prefix so that it knows that it's a file protocol. But home is usually convenient for the most purposes. Okay, so now we've got this. I am ready to start the server. I have to, uh, let me show you. Now, if I start the server, here's what's gonna happen. I say run, and then this thing ends up starting at port 8080, which is not good because we have the other server running on port 8080. It says it's already in use. So I'm just going to change the port number here so that it's not 8080. I'm gonna go to application or properties, and then I'm gonna do server.port equals, let's say 8888, which is a commonly used port for Spring Cloud Config Server by convention. So I'm gonna access that. The server is up and running. Okay, now, can I access the endpoint? Well, what endpoint do I access? If I access localhost 8888, I get an error. So what's the URL? What do I need to access? There is a specific convention for the URL with Spring Cloud Config Server, and it's important for you to understand what that convention is. Once you know that, you can map out the URL irrespective of what property files you have saved, okay? So here's how the URL works. You basically take the root, which is localhost 8888 in this case, it could be something else in your machine, and then you do a slash the file name, okay? So you have application.yaml, the file name is gonna be application, not the extension, right? Just the file name. If you have foo.yaml, it's gonna be foo here. And then slash the profile. What's the profile here? We didn't specify a profile. We didn't say application dash test or application dash blah. It was just application.yaml. So the profile is default. So for application.yaml, file name is application and profile is default. So. Let's use this URL. I'm gonna say application slash default, localhost 8888 slash application slash default. If I access this, look at this. We get the application property which I have committed in my YAML file in the Git repo accessed via a REST API thanks to Spring Cloud Config Server. Now I can easily make a change to that YAML file, commit it, and then have it refresh, and then it'll have the latest changes, all right? This is Spring Cloud Config Server, okay? So we've got this Spring Cloud Config Server pointing to the Git repo. Now, 
we can have all these different microservices talk to the Spring Cloud Config Server. And if you have to re-update the configuration, we don't have to go to each and every microservice. All we need to do is update the file in the Git repo and push it, right? You don't even have to deploy something to production. All you need to do is make a change, push, and then that's it. As long as it goes and sits in your remote repository, you can have Spring Cloud Config Server refresh it. We'll talk about refresh later, but at least we have achieved centralized, externalized, and consistent configuration. Now, the next step that's left to do is to have all these different microservices consume this configuration from the Spring Cloud Config Server. And we're gonna do that in the next tutorial by creating, no prizes for guessing, Spring Cloud Config Client. So let's check it out in the next tutorial.